Hello students, welcome to the SketchUp 8 tutorial on 3D solids and 2D nets. Today we are going to draw a triangular prism and open that solid up to reveal its two-dimensional net. Let's open SketchUp 8. Let's immediately save this file. So let's go to File, Save As. I want you to change the save in window to your student number. So click the down arrow and click on your student number. Or you can locate your student number down the left hand side here. For the file name, I want you to call it Triangular Prism. Triangular Prism. And then click Save. All right, let's begin. Let's use the zoom tool or the magnifying glass. And I want you to zoom in near the girl's feet, but not at the origin. So I'm going to pick a point right here on the red line, and I'm going to use my mouse wheel, and I'm going to scroll in so I can zoom in. I don't want to draw it right next to her feet, because when I open the solid up, it's going to interfere with where she's standing. So I actually want to draw it kind of in front of her. So I want to be looking at this, uh, the camera angle from straight on. So I'm going to go to camera. I'm going to choose standard views and I'm going to choose front. Okay, so it's looking right at her from the front. So what I want to do is I want to pan because I want to kind of draw it a little bit away from her. Okay, it's easier if you match the red line with the top of the green line. You see how now the red line and the green, the top of the green don't match. The top of the green is the horizon. So if I just match those, it'll be right on as if I'm lying on the ground. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a rectangle that actually is not on the ground, but faces straight up. So let's see if we can attempt that. So let's click on the rectangle tool, and I'm going to start a little bit away from where the girl is standing. I'm going to click on the red line here, and I'm going to start drawing upwards. So what I want you to do is, I don't want you to click a second time. I want you to type in 40cm, 40cm. Look in the bottom right hand corner into the dimensions window to see my dimensions. 40 centimeters, comma, space, 40 centimeters. And then hit enter. So you should have now a square that faces straight up. So let's verify that. Let's click on the orbit tool and let's make sure that the square goes straight up and down. And yes, it does. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to go back to the front view again, and I'm going to change to the pencil tool. So let's click on the pencil tool. So what I want to do is I want to hover my mouse, which means don't click your mouse button on this end point here. And then what I want to do is I want to hover on this end point here. And then I want to just trace the top edge and then it should find the midpoint. It should stop at the midpoint. So from this midpoint, I want to draw a line to this corner here. And then I want to draw a line from this midpoint to this corner here. So I've created a triangle in the middle of this square. Now let's use the eraser tool. And I want to erase this edge this edge, this edge, and this edge. So now we have created a triangle from a square. Let's have a look at it from the side. Very nice. All right, so I want to look at it from an angle, and then I want to give a third dimension to this triangle. I want to create a prism out of this triangle. Let's click on push pull, and I want you to click once on the triangle and then start pushing it back, but do not click a second time. I want you to type in 30 cm. Look in the distance measurement window in the bottom right hand corner, 30 centimeters. And hit enter. So that will create a depth of 30 centimeters for this triangular prism. So let's have a look at it. Wonderful. Looks like a block of cheese or a portion of a Toblerone chocolate bar. All right, let's save. So let's go to File, Save. Okay, let's have a look at this triangular prism from the front. So I can use my Orbit tool and go right to the front. 
let's create a label on the front face here. We're going to need the large tool set. So if you don't have the toolbar down the left hand side, this is how you get it. You go to view, you go to toolbars, and you've got to make sure that you've got a check mark beside large tool set. So please do that now. Okay, so now that we have the large tool set, let's look for this tool here, the 3D text tool. Let's click on the 3D text tool, and I want you to type in front, capital F, and the rest of the letters, smaller case. I'm using a font called Arial Narrow because it's a very skinny font. I've changed it to bold to make it stand out a bit. And what I want to do is I want to set the height at three centimeters. For extruded, I want to leave it at 0, 0.00. So if it's not 0, 0.00, could you type in zero centimeters or zero meters? It doesn't matter. Everything else, don't touch. All right, let's click Place. Now when we click Place, you'll see that I have control of that label now. So what I want to do is I want to position it in the center of that triangle and then click to glue it or paste it to the front face. So let's make sure that it is connected to the front face by using the Orbit tool. And yes, it is. There it is. All right, so if I spin around and look at it from the side, I'm going to repeat those steps. Let's click on the 3D text tool. And where it says enter text, I want you to type in side. Now it will remember the settings that you just used. It will remember the font, the bold, the height, and the extruded. So you don't have to change anything else. Let's click place. And I want you to place that in the center of that side and click to paste it there. All right, let's orbit around to the back and let's do the same thing. Let's click on the 3D text tool and let's type in back. Leave everything else the same, click place, and I want you to position it in the center of that triangle and click to glue it there. All right, let's orbit around. Now again, if you don't like the position of where you put it, just go edit, undo, recreate the text and paste it again. All right, so let's go to this side. Let's click 3D text tool. Let's type in side and then place, and I'm gonna place it in the center of that side there okay we have one more side to label and that's the bottom so let's use the orbit tool let's go to the bottom so we can see the bottom let's click on 3d text let's type in bottom click place and let's place it right in the center of that bottom face okay let's use the orbit tool and spin around to the front okay so the next step is to create groups so I'll explain uh, what that means as I go along. So let's click on the selection arrow or the pointer arrow. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is I want to click on the front triangle face. So let's click on that face. On your keyboard, look in the bottom left-hand corner for the control key, the CTRL key. So I want you to hold the control key, keep it held down until I say let go. So when you hold the control key, you'll notice that beside your selection arrow, there's a plus sign. So what this does is it allows you to highlight more than one object at a time. So hold the control key and then click on the text. Keep the control key held down and I want you to click on the three edges of that front triangle. Then let go of the control key. Then using your mouse, I want you to right click, right mouse click, and click on make group. Very important that you choose right mouse click there. All right, click make group. Okay, so now that entire front face is one group, so it will act together. The three edges, the front face, and the lettering will all be part of one unit. Okay, let's do the same for the side. So let's orbit around to the side. Let's change tools to the selection arrow. Let's click on the face first. Hold the control key down, click on the lettering, hold the control key, and then click on the four edges this time of this side. Now it has four edges because it's a rectangle. Then let go of the control key, right click, and choose make group. Okay, you'll see this uh, rectangular box is created around that, that side. All right. 
Let's orbit around to the back. Let's repeat. Let's click on the selection arrow tool. Let's click on the back face. Hold the control key. Click on the lettering. Click on the three edges of the triangle. Let go of the control key. Right click and choose make group. Let's go around to the left side and let's repeat. All right, so once you finish the left side, you might be thinking, okay, well, there's one more side. There's the bottom, and you would be right. However, we're actually not going to rotate or move the bottom, so we don't have to create a group. Now, you can if you want. If you want some more practice, there's no harm in doing that. That would be fine. Okay, so I've created all the groups. So now would be a good time to save. So let's go to File, Save. So the most exciting part is the last step right now. So what I want to do is I want to zoom out a little bit. Strange, because normally we want to zoom in, so I want to zoom out. So what I want to do is I want to position my camera so I can see my shape from the front side and a little bit of the side and some of the ground in front of the shape here. This is very important that I can see some of the ground in front of the shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to start opening the shape up to reveal its net. I'm sure you already know what the net looks like. Okay. So let's click on the selection arrow tool and click on the front group. Now remember, this whole front group includes the face, the lettering, and the three edges. All right, so this is the trickiest part of the tutorial, and we're going to have a lot of practice with it. So if you don't get it the first time, just keep trying it. it will, you will get it. All right, from the top toolbar, let's click on the rotate tool. It has the two spinning red arrows. I want you to click on the rotate tool, and you'll see that it looks like a protractor. So what I want you to do is I want you to position the rotate tool, center those spinning arrows to the bottom right vertex where it says endpoint in group. I want you to click and hold the mouse button. Do not let the mouse button go. I want you to trace along this edge to the opposite vertex, center it so you get endpoint in group again, and then let go of the mouse button. Now this whole rotation step depends on that step right there. All right, so if you've done it right, I want you to position your mouse on that face where it says on face in group, click once, and then start pulling it down towards the ground. Okay, and then when you think you've got it laying flat on the ground, click to stop the rotation. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that it's sitting flat on the ground. So I'm going to use the orbit tool and I'm going to orbit around and you can see now that front triangular face is sitting flat on the ground. So if you didn't quite get it, go to edit, undo and repeat those steps. Okay, so I've done it once. Now let's see if I can continue all the way around the triangular prism. So let's click on the selection arrow tool first and let's click on this side. Then click on the rotation tool. And I want to start in the bottom right-hand corner, the vertex, where it says Endpoint in Group. Click and hold the mouse button. Trace along the bottom edge to get to the opposite vertex. Then you have Endpoint in Group and let go of the mouse. Then click on the side where it says On Face in Group. Click on it and start pulling it towards the ground. Let it hit the ground and then hit and then click your mouse again to stop the rotation. There we go. So let's rotate around to the back. Let's repeat. Click on the selection arrow tool. Click on the back group. Click on rotation. In the bottom right hand corner, look for endpoint in group. Click and hold. Trace along the bottom to the opposite vertex on the left to endpoint in group. Let go of the mouse. Click on the back face where it says on face in group and start rotating down to the ground and then hit. Uh, the mouse key, the mouse button, sorry, to stop the rotation. Again, make sure that it's lying flat on the ground. Yes, it is. Okay, I have one more side to go. So let's click on the selection arrow. Let's click on that group. Click on rotation tool, bottom right hand corner, endpoint in group, click and hold, go across, endpoint in group, 
let go, click on the side on face in group, and rotate it down to the ground. And then click to end the rotation. All right, so let's deselect everything. So let's click on the selection arrow tool and click anywhere outside of your sketch. And let's rotate now so that we can see what that net looks like. And there it is. Triangular prism has one, two, three, four, five faces. So let's do a final save. File, save. So this concludes this video tutorial on how to draw a triangular prism and its net. Please call Mr. Ueda over to show him your project. Thanks for watching. Bye.